What's happening guys? Today we're going to be learning how to create this awesome cityscape inception effect here in Photoshop. So, let's get into it. What's happening guys? My name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, home to editing tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks, and tips. So today we're changing things up a little bit and we're creating this awesome photo here, sort of making like this portal or this vortex with our city. I recently saw one of these images up on Instagram recently, so I thought I'd try it for myself. And after having so much fun creating it, I thought I would share it with all of you. Now, before I get started, just a friendly reminder that if you are new here to make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all my weekly photo, video, and editing tutorials that I post every single Wednesday. So with that, let's get started. So believe it or not, this effect actually isn't that complicated and the steps to create it are very easy. Now, if you're wanting to follow along with this tutorial and create this exact image for yourself, make sure to hit the link down in the description below this video so you can download all the images for free. So once you've downloaded your images, open up the city image in Photoshop and make sure it is set as a smart object. Now, the first thing that I'll do, I'm just going to rename this to city so I don't get confused when everything starts to pile up in a bit. Now that I've renamed that layer, I'm going to go up here to Filter, down here to Distort, and down here to Polar Coordinates. So it'll kind of look like this weird wonky thing, but if you just go on the minus button here, it'll zoom out. And as you see, it makes like this spinny vortex effect with our photo. So I'm going to click OK. It'll load up, and then all of a sudden our photo is now in this sort of circle orb thing. Of course, this is pretty close to what we're wanting, but as you'll notice, there is this weird line here because it basically took each end of the photo and folded it around into a circle. So those are just those two ends meeting up. So we need to cover that somehow. So what we have to do is duplicate this layer by pressing Command or Control J. Then we're going to right click on that layer and go rasterize layer. So now our city copy is set to just a normal layer. Now what I'll do is I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to just zoom out a bit so I can see my project a little better. And now I'm just going to rotate this around so that line is pretty much on the opposite side of our canvas. And now I'm just going to create a layer mask, invert that layer mask by pressing Command or Control I. And now I'm going to just grab my brush tool. And with a nice soft brush, I'm just going to paint over the areas to cover up that line. So as you'll see, we now are revealing some different towers and stuff. So here's what we have to be mindful of is as we use our layer mask, it's just revealing more of the city below, which is in this case is pretty much these buildings down here. So what I want to do is I kind of want to continue on this suburban area and continue it along all the way up to this edge of the tower. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much just shape my layer mask around these buildings that I want and then I'll adjust my image accordingly. That might sound complicated but just bear with me here. So I'm first going to just make my brush a little bit harder and I'm going to be painting black just to mask back in this building here so I can see it 100%. Now that I have that nice bit of my building there, I'm going to switch my foreground color back to white and I'm just going to meander my way around the edges of these buildings down here. It doesn't have to be too exact, you just want to be following around the edges of the main buildings here. So this is looking pretty good for me right now. So as you see, we've covered up our line. We have a pretty soft transition now from our suburban area into what will now, what will soon be more suburban area. And we have a nice rough mask around our buildings here. Now on our city copy layer, I'm just gonna click this little link layer here. So now I can move my image separately from my layer mask. So I'm gonna make sure that my layer is selected. I'm just gonna zoom out, grab my move tool by pressing V. And now I'm just going to rotate this whole image here. And as you see, my layer mask doesn't change, but what is filling in the gap does. So I'm going to spin on through until I find a similar patch of suburban area there. And so now I'm going to basically just line up those horizons as best I can.
and if need be as you see here I've kind of re-shown my the line that I was trying to cover up so I'm just going to mask that out on my city copy layer and I'm just going to be painting back in some of those areas just to cover up that line so that looks pretty good to me right there and now I'm going to press command zero just to zoom out fit it to my screen and I'm going to just crop this in so I'm only seeing about this area kind of in the middle here so I'm going to grab my crop tool by pressing C and I'm going to move my selection sort of down so I, in this area here so I'm able to see the full circle but I'm sort of favoring it over on one side or the other. The way you crop it is totally up to you. I'm just kind of doing what makes me happy, but to each their own. So now you'll have a cropped version of your city circle here. And at this point, you'll want to make sure that you don't have any weird things going on. So I like to just zoom in and take a little peek around my whole image, make sure there isn't anything astray or weird in this case i might be able to just fix this little building up right here so i'm going to go to my city copy layer mask and grab my brush tool and i'm going to just try to mask out this area fix it up a little bit better and now that's looking a whole lot better so Looking the whole way around my image, it does look all pretty legit and good. So I got not really too much to worry about. Now, before we go to our next step, we're going to just do some final little touches here so we don't have to do it later. So I'm going to first shift click both of these layers. I'm going to press command or control G to group those layers. And I'm going to just call this breakdown. So now this will be the backup for the merged layer that we're about to create. Now we'll press Command or Control J to duplicate this breakdown group. And with that breakdown copy group selected, we'll press Command or Control E to merge all the layers in that group. And now we have basically everything merged onto one layer here. Now I want to do just a little bit of fixing up of these clouds. And I also just want to get rid of this bird that's in here. So I'm going to create a new layer, clip it to my layer mask down below just by right clicking and going to create clipping mask. Now I'm going to grab my clone stamp tool by pressing S on my keyboard. I'm going to hold alt to sample an area close to the center of my clouds here. I'm just going to rescale a little larger, hold alt to sample, and I'm just going to fill in those clouds a little better just so there's not that weird like vortex looking thing in the middle. And with that, that also got rid of our bird for us. So now I'll just call this layer to clone and this other layer to merged city. Once you're happy with that, we're pretty much ready to move on to our next step. So this is cool and all, it, it does have that awesome vortex feel to it. But what I want is I want to make it feel a little bit wider and I want to have some normal buildings in the front. So it kind of looks like it goes from normal and then folds around into a circle. So that's why we have to create the new document. So I'm going to press command or control N to create a new document. Your new document dialog box will come up. In this case, I'm going to do a 12 by 18 in a portrait orientation here. And I'm going to just click create. Now I'm going to find my city image once again, drag and drop it into my new project here. And I'm going to just rescale this a little to better suit my needs. Position your photo for whatever amount of city you want in your foreground. So this city right here is going to soon become the foreground and normal looking city of my vortex. So that looks okay right there for me. And I'm just going to do a little bit of a crop adjustment for my canvas. So I grab my crop tool by pressing C and I'm just going to drag out a little up this way and complete this way just so I can see the, the edge of that tower as well. Click OK. And now going back to my other document here, I'm going to shift click both my clone and my merged city. I'm going to press command or control E once again just to merge both of those. I'm going to rename it again to merge city. Now I'm going to grab my move tool by pressing V on my keyboard and I'm going to drag and drop that into my new project here. So as you'll see, I have my vortex now in my other in my other project. So I'm going to put that behind my normal city for now and I'm going to call this one to foreground city. So we have our foreground city sitting on the front and then we'll have our merge city or let's actually call it vortex city for so no one gets confused vortex city 
So now we have our foreground city and our vortex city on two different layers. First thing that I'm going to do is I need to cut out this background here, the sort of the water and the sky because we, no, we're not going to want that. So we don't have to go too crazy and nitpicky about this because most of these towers are actually going to mask out anyways. So we can just use our quick selection tool. So I'll press W for my quick selection tool. And with my foreground city selected, I'm going to just mask around my buildings here. Make sure that all the edges of your buildings are within that selection. Like you don't want to, you don't want to have any of this going on. So if you want to adjust your selection, just hold alt and it, then click again and it will just take away selections for you. And usually it'll do a pretty half decent job at selecting what you need. So this is looking fine to me right now. If we need to adjust anything, we can mask it back in afterwards. So with our selection here, I'm going to click on my layer mask icon here. It'll add that selection to a layer mask for me, but I want to invert it. So I'm gonna press Command or Control I to invert that layer mask and turn off my vortex city so this isn't so confusing. And now you see we have our pretty much a very rough outline of our buildings cut out here. Now that we've done this, I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to just touch up some of these buildings because obviously there's a little bit of weird lumps and stuff going on. So I'm just going to grab my brush tool with my layer mask of my foreground city selected. I'm just going to go through and sort of fill in any of these weird gaps that have happened. I'm painting through with a hardness of about 30% just because all these buildings in the distance don't need to be tack sharp, but I also don't want them to be completely soft. So just finding that nice balance of brush hardness is all you really need to do in this case. So now our mask is starting to look pretty okay. And so now we're ready to add in our vortex city. So I'm gonna turn that layer back on and I'm going to rescale it to fit in the desired location of my foreground city. So somewhere in this area looks good to me. Now I'm going to go back to my foreground city and I'm going to do a little bit of rescaling. So I'm going to make my foreground city a little larger, maybe squish it in just a little and place it in right around here for now. Now what we need to do is because this foreground city here, it doesn't really have any bend or curve to it. So what we have to do is we have to add one manually to make this transition from flat to curved a little bit more natural. Luckily for us, that is really easy to do. So I'll first rasterize my foreground city layer by right clicking and going to rasterize layer. Rasterizing a layer basically means it just takes off its smart filters it's no longer a smart object it just converts back to a normal layer so just a fancy way of saying it's converting back to a normal layer once you've done that you can press command or control t to transform and we'll right click and go down here to warp now i'm going to grab these corners and just drag up a little like this and do the same down here this is kind of like a little bit of trial and error but basically you're wanting to curve both ends up just a little bit so that kind of entails just dragging in these corners, maybe dragging down the middle a little bit. So now as you see, it kind of has this bulge feeling to it. So this transition doesn't feel as aggressive. And to check that off to commit to my position there. And now we're ready to go on to our final step. And so now our final step is just blending in our foreground city into our vortex city. So all we have to do is just go back to our layer mask of our foreground city, grab our brush tool. Now we're just going to mask out our foreground city until we can find some buildings that we can kind of blend our transition between. It doesn't have to be super flawless, but you basically just want it to have a pretty smooth transition so it doesn't feel awkward or anything like that. So even just by doing that, you can see that it actually doesn't look too bad already. Maybe I'll do a couple more touch-ups here just to make this feel a little bit more natural. And again, make sure you're using a soft brush just to make your life a little bit easier when doing this. So now what you're beginning to see is a little bit more of an easy transition from our normal city that isn't curved or folded around or anything into our vortex city and that's kind of what we're wanting to go for now another option is you can mask out these tall towers because they are noticeable in a vortex image as well so i'm going to go ahead and do that but i'm going to leave that creative decision ultimately up to you so now i'm just doing a little quick scan around my city here down where everything is connecting it's starting to look pretty good everything is looking 
pretty reasonable. There's no weird things going on. So I'm just going to make sure I'm just going to touch up this corner of this building here and I'm pretty much going to be able to move on to my next step. So now we've created our vortex city. Everything's looking exactly how we're wanting. It has that smooth transition from our flat normal city and wrapping around all the way in a circle. So now we can go in and add a little bit of a lighting effect. Since the light is hitting our towers in a very specific direction, it's all coming in from our left side. I'm just gonna put a little bit of a light flare coming in here just to add a cool little effect. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to grab my brush tool and I'm gonna pick a nice orange color here because there is a whole bunch of like sunset tones in here right now. So nice orange color, rescale my brush here, click once, go over again, click again, and one more time. Now for those of you who have followed along my channel for a while now, you'll know that I'm pretty much just doing the exact same steps as I did in my how to create light burst tutorial that I created just a few months ago. If you're wanting to check out that tutorial and learn the steps behind light bursts in a little bit more detail, you can go ahead and click the video link down in the description below of this video. Anyways, once you've made your orb on a new layer, just call it to sun glow. And now with your move tool, you can move it around wherever you want. And in this case, I'm gonna put it right on the outside of my image and I'm gonna stretch it out like this. Now I'm gonna change my layer blending mode from normal down here to linear dodge add. I'm going to place it right along the side here and I'm going to go and change my fill slider. I'm going to slide all the way to zero and I'm going to bring it back up until I find an area that I'm happy with. So I kind of want this over the top kind of Michael Bay aggressive sun flare effect here. Now to really top it off, I'm going to add a little bit of a flare texture into this image. So I'm going to drag and drop that flare into my image. Now. What you guys will notice is there's a whole bunch of black behind our flare, so that doesn't really help us, but here's how you can get rid of it really fast. We can just change our layer blending mode from normal down here to screen, which gets rid of all the black for us, and now all of a sudden our black is gone and our flare is still there. How amazing is that? I'm going to press command or control T, right click, flip horizontal, so now I can place that flare over in my sunburst here. I'm going to just stretch it out a little so it's a little more noticeable, and now I kind of have like this cool light texture coming in there. If you're like me and you don't like this light flare in the middle here, just add a layer mask to your element stripe and just mask it out with a soft brush. I'm going to set my brush opacity to 20% and I'm just going to click over it a few times with a black brush just to mask it out like this. And we're all good to go. Now from here we have successfully created our inception cityscape effect. Now here's how my image turned out after all of my color adjustments, but since color adjustments are such a subjective thing, I'm going to leave that up to you guys and I can't wait to see the edits that you guys end up creating with this effect. Now obviously in this tutorial I showed you how to create this effect using a city, but you can actually do the same effect using mountains or different nature landscapes and things like that. If you guys did follow along with this tutorial and you created this image for yourself, I would love to see how your photos turned out. So make sure to tag me on Instagram at burnwills whenever you upload so then I can check it out, show some love and uh, envy at all of your amazing artistic talents. Now one last friendly reminder to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of my weekly photo editing and video tutorials. Otherwise that is all I have for you for today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of how to create the cityscape inception effect here in Photoshop. Again, my name is Brennan from BeWellCreative.com and I'll catch you back here next time.